Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. The one company in the housing market that I think really has a lot of long-term potential is Zillow. You might remember a few years ago that Zillow really went all in on the iBuying business. That ended up being kind of a disaster for them. They didn't end up losing a lot of money because the housing market and the, and the strong value for houses meant that they could unload the houses that they did have sometimes at a nice profit. So Zillow has now retreated to become more of a platform company, connective tissue between people who are searching for homes, for mortgages, and even for apartments, and the individuals and businesses who are supplying those. Oftentimes that means realtors who are trying to reach customers, but I think that may change in the future. So as we look at Zillow, I'm gonna go through some of the third quarter results. I want investors to keep in mind that this should be thought of as a platform company. This is a company that's connecting buyers and sellers. So it's a digital layer that sits in the middle of the housing market. And as we have potentially some disruption coming from a $1.8 billion judgment that could grow, grow to over $5 billion against the National Association of Realtors, we may see the fees for realtors coming down. We may see customers and even agents trying to build different business models to cut out that five, six, 7% fee that real estate agents can take. And who's gonna be connecting those buyers and sellers? I think Z Zillow is the natural answer. So that's why I'm so interested in this company and the upside, given the down housing market, this is not a profitable company right now, but if you look out 10 years, given the growth trends and some of the segments, I think there's a lot of potential here. So I wanna dig into some of those numbers and what we know right now. My name is Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. Check out fool.com slash ASYM for their top 10 stocks to buy right now. There's a link below and then a link in the show notes as well if you're interested in that. And let's dig into some of the results. And I'm going to show the segment results first. And this may not be what you think of Zillow as, but this is the rental segment revenue and users unique visitors for rentals on Zillow's platform. And the reason that I think this is important is one, this is going to be a much more stable business than relying on housing transactions, which we have seen over the last few years can be very volatile. But the other thing is if Zillow is the place you go to find a new home and a new apartment, then that would be a phenomenal position for them to be they have repeated over and over that based on Comscore's data, they are the number one place to go find apartments. And you can see that unique visitors up about 10% and revenue has jumped from $74 million a year ago to $99 million. So the just tremendous momentum there for the rentals business. If this can be a three, four, $500 million revenue business in five to 10 years, I think that would be a phenomenal addition to the current way that we think about Zillow. Mortgages is another segment that I'm keeping an eye on. This has really been a disappointing business because revenue has not been very strong. You can see that right here. There's a lot of competition in mortgages right now. So, And given the low volume of housing sales, I think it's fair to say that this isn't a business we should expect a lot out of. Purchase loan origination volume is something that Zillow's trying to get into, actually originating loans themselves and then selling them to investors. So that has positive trends, but overall mortgage revenue pretty flat not going to be a contributor to the bottom line, but that's not necessarily why you're buying Zillow. Let's go back up to the biggest segment that is residential revenue. This is primarily advertising revenue or lead revenue coming from real estate agents, $162 million in the corner and down 3%, but relative to industry transactions, they said that those were down 14% year over year. So we still have Zillow basically not being as affected by the decline in the housing market as the market overall. So not really taking market share, but the highs may not be as high and the lows may not be as low for a company like Zillow, which I think is generally positive. Here are some of these numbers and a more overall look at the business. Three months ended September 30th, total revenue up 3%, but residential revenue was down 3%. Rentals up 34% and mortgages down 8%. Most profit, this is always one I keep an eye on, down just 2% and an extremely high gross profit margin. So the big reason that they have the loss that they do is because of stock-based compensation. That is a 
bigger topic. I think they could definitely pull back on stock-based compensation, but that's why you see adjusted EBITDA is actually positive $107 million, despite the net loss. Net loss includes that stock-based compensation. The other thing that I wanted to go through is the acquisition of Follow-Up Boss. This is another software company. And remember I talked about earlier, this being a platform company. So if you're going to be a platform for real estate transactions, whether that's houses or apartments, you're going to want to own the platform that realtors are using as well. And that's exactly what follow up boss is. You can see some of the things that they're doing here, following leads, they call these a CRM customer resource management or a customer relationship management tool. And this would just be so that your real estate agents aren't going to be following up with the same person, you know, actually who owns that lead, if you will, allows you to engage with them and then coach those agents as well. So I think about this as deepening the relationship with the existing infrastructure of the housing industry or the status quo. This is a $500 million acquisition, a very big number, but I think it does improve Zillow's platform and the way that they're thinking about themselves as they the place that want they want to be the go-to for home seekers, for people who are starting the process by looking for a mortgage, for real estate agents who are looking for leads, and even for people who are starting to list their homes directly, I think that's going to be a potentially a really big business for Zillow long term. Now, in the numbers, you can see that Zillow is not profitable. So it's a little bit hard to value a company like Zillow based on something like a price to earnings multiple. You could look at a price to sales multiple, which right now is 3.7 on a next 12 months basis. That's an enterprise value to sales multiple. So not terribly expensive for a technology company, but also not the cheapest company. Enterprise value to EBITDA on a next 12 month basis is about 17 right now. Again, reasonable multiple, but the upside for Zillow is not in improving their financials next year. The upside in, from Zillow is growing this revenue in their share of real estate transactions year after year for the next one or two decades. Again, these platform companies, like you see in search, like you see in streaming, end up being really valuable if you can be the connective tissue between buyers and sellers or advertisers, people who are seeking buyers for what they're selling, whether that's a direct homeowner or whether that is a real estate agent as the business is really driven by now. So anything that is improving that market position is really going to be a positive for Zillow. The difference with some of these businesses, like these comparisons like search or streaming is that the housing market changes much, much more slowly than some of other, some of these other technology businesses. The good news for Zillow is there's not really any major competitor out there trying to do exactly what they're doing. And like I said, the big news over the last couple of weeks is a jury ruling that the National Association of Realtors was illegally colluding to keep fees in the real estate industry high. That's obviously their incentive, but that's exactly where Zillow could come in and offer an alternative by connecting those buyers directly with sellers. If you have looked for a home recently, you may look directly on Zillow. You don't have to go to a real estate agent's site. Now, Zillow will, will likely connect you with an agent, whether that's to do a tour or something like that but they don't have to make that connection with that agent. It's just that that agent is paying for that connection or the lead. The business model could change as long as the platform and Zillow's place in that platform stays the same. So that is gonna be a really interesting development because that could end up lowering fees in the real estate industry, could push some of the existing players to take different business models or even out of the market. So something I'm definitely gonna be watching because I think that's ultimately gonna be bullish for Zillow, but. Again, it could take 5, 10, 20 years for any sort of bullish strategic positioning to play out for a company like Zillow. Definitely a business that takes a long-term view, long-term horizon from investors, but I think they're doing the right things strategically. They're losing money on a gap basis, but are still profitable on an adjusted EBITDA basis. So not burning through cash. This isn't a cash-burning business that you have to worry about survival. It's just a question of when they're going to be able to extract the value that I think that they could as a platform in the housing market. What do you think about Zillow's results? Love to hear your thoughts on this company and the stock. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.